Hey, it's Believer's House, and this is Morning Devotions, and we are looking at Colossians chapter 3. This is part 2. Yesterday, we looked at part 1. Just a minute here. Sorry, I have a dry spot. And today, we're going to be looking at part 2, which is, we're going to start at verse 10. In this section, we're talking about putting on new. Yesterday, we talked about the things that we need to take off to become like Jesus. Today, we're going to be talking about what we're putting on. So I'm going to read the scripture here in verses 10 and 11. As we put off the old man, we must put on the new man. So here's the scripture. And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, by Marian, Cynesian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. So we see here in the scripture that Jesus is telling, or Paul is telling us, that um, to put on the new man, it's, it's much like the same imagery of putting on new clothes. We take off one set of clothes and we put on another set of clothes. And when we become a new man or a new woman, a new uh, a creator creation in Jesus, we put on a new set of clothes. We cannot be who we are if we're still attempting to wear our old clothes. So this is something that we must do. This isn't something that he does for us. We have to make a choice to change our clothes and put on who he is. How do we do that? Well, we put on who he is by learning who he is and learning who he says we are and taking off the parts of us that are contrary to what God says is true. Anything in us that is contrary to his word we need to remove and we need to instill his truth in our life so because the new man is renewed in knowledge he's hungry to know what god says in his word um, he has the image of him who created everything who is jesus right we want to be like him we want to be in his image adam sinned and is regarded as the old man now and Jesus is now considered the new one, new man. He is the new reincarnated, reincarnated firstborn of creation. And so we should put off our old man, the Adam portion of who we are, and put on the new image of Jesus Christ, the new man. So the scripture says here that there's neither Greek, nor Jew, nor circumcised, nor uncircumcised, nor barbarian, nor Cetian, nor slave, nor free. And the new man is part of a family, which favors no race, no nationality, no culture, no, no class, nor ethnic, no ethnicity, ethnicity. The only choices are is you're saved or you're not saved. You're saved or you're not saved. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else. So once you're saved, you're in that uh, group, that family that new creation of Christ. And so it breaks down all barriers that se separate people in society because we become, we form something new. We form the kingdom of God. We form the body of Christ. And the scripture goes on there and it says, because Christ is all in all. And that's how it should be. He should be all in all and we should all be one new man. And then verses 12 through 17 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, that's us, God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bear with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint about, against one another, even as Christ forgave you, compare it to what God, Christ has forgiven you for, right? So you must also do... But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And this is verse 17 that our devotional is actually what pulled out. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God, to God through the Father. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. So the new man, the one new man, he lives differently. He relates differently. He lives in forgiveness. He lives in love and he lives in peace. 
And a good friend of mine uh, used to say, let peace be your guide. And she lived her way, her, her life that way. She lived in such a way that peace was her guide. If something brought her out of peace, then she didn't go there. She only lived in peace. And she still does. And so I want you know, this to be um, our guide and our personal motto as well, that we can have peace be our guide. And we need to encourage ourselves that the one new man lives his life, all of his life, for Jesus, and he only seeks to do what he can do in the name of the Lord. And he will persevere in the difficulty and such things, knowing that when he does, that he's doing them in the name of the Lord. And uh, this verse, uh, this chapter, chapter 3 goes on through 18 and 19, talking about a man, uh, um, one, the one new man's marriage. And it gives some instruction there. When we're uh, married and we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, when we become a new man, our marriages should be different. And verses 20 through 21, it talks about the new man's parent and child relationships. As we become new in Christ, our relationships with our children and with our parents should change. And verses 32 through 41 says, even if we have servants, the master and servant relationship or boss to employee relationship should change when we become um, who Christ has called us to be, when we begin to walk in the newness. So if these relationships are not transformed, there um, are po there's a possibility that they have not changed their clothes or that there are some clothes that they need to remove and that others need to be put on. So my question today is, um, have you ever asked the Lord, Lord, are there other clothes that you have for me? Is there newness that you want to bring into my life? Is there something old that I've been wearing that I've been clinging to because it's comfortable that I need to give to you? And that, I would say, would be a, a great question uh, to ask the Lord. And then, of course, do whatever he tells you. See you tomorrow.